Uh, is it Keshri Sahadri? Sahadri? Okay, just remind me. Paul Trust? Paul Trust. Danielle Brecker? Danielle's here? Hi, Daniel. And and the way you the way you just went to the microphone gave us all a new round of energy. So you, I have you, been here since five because I voted before I came here. You so. did it in such a way we all have a new round. So thank you very much okay. for that. Oh, really strange to watch myself on screen. Okay. Hello, I am Danielle Brecker testifying on behalf of Queens Community Board 2. Queens Community Board 2 is dedicated to making sure the people who live within our boundaries, our neighbors, are represented, have a voice in decisions that impact their lives, and have needed resources. We call on the New York City Redistricting Commission to hold additional hearings in Queens in September and beyond. So everyone who wants to testify, and tonight is not everyone, um, has an opportunity to do so. Public input should be the priority. The Commission's proposal, uh, com sorry, Queens Community Board 2 opposes the first map proposal for Council District 26 as it does not comport with the New York City Charter and will have an ad for adverse impact on our community. The Commission's proposal to add a portion of Manhattan and all of Roosevelt Island to Queens based Council District 26 violates the City Charter district, districting requirements as it fails to keep the neighborhoods and communities intact, keep the district compact, and, create an, uh, and creates an oddly shaped crossover district. The proposed 26 further violates the requirement to keep neighborhoods and communities intact by dividing Woodside into four council districts. The impact on CB2 is stark. The proposed map shifts, as many people have said, the proposed map shifts the racial, racial makeup of District 26 towards majority white, 29% currently, 44% to 4, 44%, meaning further disenfranchisement and deprioritization of communities of color and immigrants. And the proposed map inflates the average income of District 26 and CB2 to from 80,000 to 110,000, meaning the income is overstated for the majority. But it is not about demographics, it is about representation and resources. While the proposed map would make Manhattan Eastside Hospitals part of 26, CB2 would still have no hospitals or place to get places to give birth. As ambulances will not cross a bridge or go through a tunnel unless one, unless one pays privately, healthcare will remain inaccessible and inequitable for many CB2 residents. The proposed 26 means small communities like Blissville and Wynwood Gardens will have even less representation and resources. In Blissville, this impacts the resources available to unhoused residents and shelters. With the proposed District 26, CB2 schools would compete for already decreased funding and long-standing problems of overcrowding and the need to build new schools, especially in growing areas like Hunters Point and Court Square, would, would continue to be unmet for years. The proposed 26 would divert attention from funding to environmental issues in CB2, including Newtown Creek cleanup and access and health issues related to Asthma Alley. The proposed map would increase public park space in District 26, but that space would be in Manhattan or on Roosevelt Island, which is a cause for concern regarding funding for existing and new parks in CB2. Thank you. And thank you. Was it uh, Keshri Sahadre? Was that the individual who? Yeah. Okay, take your time. Don't don't run. Don't run. Don't run. And Paul Trust did not respond. Correct. Okay. So after Keshri, uh, Noni Pratt. Is Noni Pratt here? Omkar Buddha Magar. Say again. Okay, thank you. And I imagine Phoenix Rana Magar as well, as well as Susang Buddha Magar. Okay, fine. Why don't you 
Go ahead. And then Thank I'll you. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, no. Don't Go apologize, please. Good That's evening. Okay. My name is Kesri Seishadri, and I'm here tonight as a representative of the Indo-Caribbean Alliance, Inc., otherwise known as ICA, the first nonprofit organization dedicated to the empowerment of Indo-Caribbeans in the United States. I am 51 years old, and I live in Richmond Hill, Queens. I have been living here for more than 30 years with my elderly parents who migrated from Guyana in 1985. After my marriage in 1999, I also brought my Indian-born husband, who is here with me today, uh, to live here in Richmond Hill with us. I also have three siblings who live in Queens with their families. I work at a law firm at downtown Manhattan and commute daily on the A train from Lefferts Boulevard to Broadway Nassau and back. Being a resident of Richmond Hill is a great source of pride for me and my family, which is why I am against the Commission's plan to split Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park into several districts. The Indo-Caribbean community is among the five largest immigrant populations in the city and the second largest in Queens. We have been contributing to the city in the areas of healthcare, education, law enforcement, politics, and business, and being one of the hardest hit by COVID-19 pandemic, I think we deserve an equal opportunity for representation at the table of power. You have heard from many leaders and residents today, all conveying how important it is to keep communities together. Representation is important. At ICA, we see families who come through our doors asking for support, ranging from tutoring and mentoring for their children, social services assistance, as well as questions around immigration and voting. In addition to this, whenever a natural disaster strikes or man-made disaster, uh, such as COVID-19 fires that we recently had on 125th Street on Liberty Avenue and other disasters, um, in our community, people come to us for support. We have a responsibility in our community to meet the needs of the thousands that are in our community. It is important for us to have the representation and that seat at the table that will enable us to continue to provide that support from our community. A healthy community has a strong identity it is so important for communities to maintain their identities and be supported in every way. This past Saturday, I was fortunate to lead a group of Indo-Caribbean families on a tour of Liberty Avenue in Richmond Hill. I watched the pride and joy on the faces of the young children as I pointed out landmarks of the contributions of members of our community, such as Pandit Ramwal Street and Little Guyana. This in itself is a result and reward of our keeping our districts and communities intact. These young people will grow up with a strong sense of identity and purpose. Please don't take that away from them. Keep all of South Ozone Park and Richmond Hill together. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, <clears throat> is it Otold Rock? Okay, Jaden Amir. Perna Paja Magar. Uh, Dondup, is it D H O N D U P Lakpa? And uh, Hujani Lee? Good evening, everyone. My name is Lee, and I'm 26 years old. I spend most of my adult life in Amherst and Jackson Heights near the hospital and also Flushing. 
As a Chinese American immigrant, I recognize the Commission's effort in keeping the Asian American community whole in District 25. However, I also fully support the unity map, not just for Amherst, but also for all other neighboring districts, which keeps the Asian American interests at heart and unites all communities that are consistent of people of color, since oftentimes we do share the very same interests and concerns. People often say Queens is the most diverse borough, but I would like to add that Amherst and Jackson Heights is at the heart of Queens and undoubtedly the most diverse neighborhood. The majority of Amherst is in Congressional District 6, State Senate District 12, and Assembly District 39. Historically, we tend to elect minority and queer local representatives to advocate on our behalf. Last year, we saw a record-breaking voter turnout to elect the first ever Asian American city council member to our district. To be more specific with the draft map, I'm seeing that in my district, a few blocks below Roosevelt near Whitney were chopped off, and a huge chunk of Woodside above Broadway, which should belong to District 26, were somehow added in return. From my understanding, Woodside and Sunnyside have always been combined in terms of district lines due to their location and the community's shared interest. The unity map would address this issue perfectly, uh, as it keeps the entirety of Woodside and Sunnyside in District 26, and also Amherst and Jackson Heights in 25, without any overlapping and misrepresentation of the communities involved. Also, as a Chinese American immigrant, I'm so proud to say that I'm a community organizer based in Flushing, which is also why I'm advocating for the unity map for Flushing and Bayside, which address the misrepresentation issue of our community. The Commission's draft map lowered the northern boundary of District 20 from 23rd Avenue to 29th Avenue. We ask that the Commission's map to be modified to consider the growing Asian American community in Mitchell Linden and move the northern boundary to 22nd Avenue as the Unity map does. More importantly, I would also like the Commission to reconsider the Unity map, specifically near Murray Hill, which is a vibrant Korean American neighborhood that centers on Northern Boulevard and is currently divided by the Commission's draft map as well as in existing lines. The Unity map addressed this issue perfectly by bringing in the entirety of Murray Hill back to District 20, where it should belong, a district that is predominantly consisted of Chinese and Korean Americans and historically elects Asian Americans as our local representatives. Thank you for your time and consideration. And thank you for your testimony. Now we're going to go virtual, then we'll come back in person. Uh, Maury, is it Galani? Yes, Galanoy, thank you. Galanoy, I'm sorry. No, that's perfect. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, it's late and I am grateful that you all have stayed here. Thank you, Chairman Walcott and the Commission. Uh, really appreciate it. My name is Maury Gallinoy. I am uh, chairperson of the Queens Community Board too. Um, before I start, I just want to say uh, how uh, listening to the really heartfelt, thoughtful and passionate testimony from my neighbors here in Queens, uh, really humbles me and makes me so proud to be um, a resident of Queens. Uh, it really shows how important it is to come together to participate in democracy and let our voices be heard. I'm testifying tonight to make sure that our community has proper representation, that we prevent disenfranchisement and that we ensure that marginalized communities are not divided and diluted. This is why we strongly oppose the map, this first map proposal for District 26. The draft district does not align with the New York City Charter and it will have adverse effects on our community and our council district. Um, the district is not compact as you've heard over and over again from different folks testimony. It, does not limit crossover districts. In fact, it spreads over three different land masses. I know it's really only two boroughs technically, but it is three different land masses that are all distinct. Um, the proposed district actually received a score of 27.4 out of 100 for compactness by the CUNY Center for Urban Research, which you can learn more about that at redistrictingandu.org. Um, as you've heard before, 
it's not keeping the community intact. And when we look at the demographics, as we've heard before, right now we have a very even split among Asian, Hispanic, and white non-Hispanic, all around 30%. The new district would be 44% white non-Hispanic and will drop all of the other uh, demographic ethnicities. Um, and if we cut out Woodside and we split it into multiple districts, it's just going to lead to more disenfranchisement. CB2, as you've heard before, has a dearth of public open and green spaces and no hospital birthing center or women's medical facility. These are all things we have been working hard to improve. However, if we add in Manhattan and Roosevelt Island, the district suddenly looks like we have a glut of resources and infrastructure and we won't actually be getting any improvements in the district and that could hurt our ability to uh, get the resources we need. Uh, what we haven't talked about much is an impact on the actual council district. CB2, of course, as a city agency, is a nonpartisan agency, but we must address the impact of the proposed District 26 would have on CB2 Queens. The result of this map would mean diminished representation. Why? Because the council member, whoever that would be, would be saddled with multiple community boards and three different land masses, meaning less representation attention, resources, and funding for all the districts. This representative would also be responsible for multiple land use and rezonings, meaning that the member would have to spend significant time and have significant influence on development across two boroughs and multiple communities, and would likely need multiple district offices, perhaps three, Queens, Roosevelt Island, and Manhattan, which would mean more money spent on rent rather than constituent services. Finally, I call on the commission to hold additional hearings. We've seen this is really, really a tremendous outpouring of participation tonight. We know it's exhausting for everyone, but people in Queens want to be able to testify, and we're grateful for you staying so late. But this is a time of year when people are on vacation and many are visiting family in faraway places. As you've heard, this is a borough uh, that is extremely diverse with immigrants from all over the world. And while school is out, people are vacationing and visiting family far away. So the community must have a voice in this process and we must not let logistics impede their opportunity to participate. Uh, our full statement will contain more and will be submitted. Thank you for your time and attention. And thank you for your testimony. Okay, now we're back here, uh, Five Borough Man. to the chair and executive director who could pass for Shaft and Superfly, not to mention Godfrey Cambridge and Raymond St. John, courtesy of Cotton Council Harlem and Compact Charleston Blue. Again, I told you these public hearings shouldn't start before 6 p.m. and you didn't listen. There's an old saying goes, your hard head will give you a soft behind. You didn't tell me before time I could pre-register. So I was confused when the female employee was sitting at the table asked me if I pre-register. You didn't tell me I could pre-register as far as I know. So as we saw, I uh, signed a sheet, but didn't know that I had to wait over six hours before I could finally testify, which I find very disturbing given the fact that I arrived here at 3.59 p.m. Doors are open until 5.15 p.m. and it's now after 11, it's almost midnight, and now I'm finally testifying. I don't find that amusing, and I sure as hell don't appreciate it. I sincerely hope you don't do that in the future. In fact, regarding the rainy four public hearings you're holding, I like to pre-register. This way, hopefully, I'm going to wait several hours before you finally call my name. It feels like you didn't even want to acknowledge me, which I didn't appreciate. As I said before, if you want to be successful, if you want to redraw the line successfully, you should go by the bus corridors. That's the best way to redraw these maps. Go by the bus corridors. We have many bus corridors in all five boroughs. If you go by the bus, the bus corridors could be the boundaries. This way we'll know who's representing us under the city council, under the state assembly, under the state senate, under the federal congress. But apparently you didn't listen because from what I was told, you want to separate 
sunny side and what side you want to separate ozone park or richmond hill so i guess your favorite song is you got to keep them separated as i said before you're not supposed to break up the communities this isn't break up the makeup it's called by the stylistics i'm sure you remember that song you're older than me you should remember it okay this is round two and so if i haven't seen improvements from round one the chair who compares with master p and executive director aren't listening they're not sharing our concerns I don't know why they bother holding public hearings to begin with. It's like they're holding up, they're not holding for our interests, they're holding for their interests. Well, as you can see, the whole term is empty. Is this the conditioning commission or is it the MTA, which stands for money thrown away? You just got to keep on trying until you get it right. Okay. And by the way, speaking to you two gentlemen is like speaking to my divorce and never do a parent. You don't listen, they don't listen. So as I said, your hard head will give you a soft behind, a food for thought. Thank you for your testimony. Um, is it Howard Binbar? Um, Anud Dewa? Akello Thomas? Joyce Short, uh, Anceli Cantos, Marciala Santos, Phil Wong, Craig the Caricature, Anel Shahai. Say that again. Spell it again, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't see that yet. Um, I said Phil Wong, and then that was Phil Wong, maybe. Um, Anel Shahai. Jane Pratt. Gerald Nunez. Benjamin Kim. Yeah. Benjamin Kim? Yeah. Yay. <laughs> don't run, don't run, don't run, don't run, please. Don't run. Hello. Hello, thank you. Wow. Um, I want to thank you for your time and hosting us so late into the night. Uh, my name is Benjamin Kim, and I'm the project coordinator for Woodside on the Move a local community nonprofit that serves the community of Woodside and the greater Western Queens area. We are a member of the APA Voice Redistricting Task Force, as many of our previous members have spoke about. Um, aside from the fact that I work in Woodside, I'm also a resident of Woodside. I've been living in Woodside for about six years now. Um, my family settled in Western Queens from Korea, and we have long ties in the community here in Sunnyside and Woodside. Um, the prelimin preliminary map proposal by the District and Commission is very concerning as it splits Woodside into four separate city council districts, 22, 25, 26, and 30. It puts the bulk of Woodside into City Council District 30, dividing the communities of interest within the city current city council lines, disregarding the city charter and the Federal Voting Rights Act. Woodside on the Move's main goals as a community-based organization are to serve the Woodside community and by splitting up these neighborhoods, it prevents our organization from doing our work to the fullest potential. Indeed, we were shocked at the preliminary map proposal as none of our members or Woodside residents testified at the discretionary hearing to be placed in City Council District 30. Too often, APA communities are div divided as an afterthought to meet a district's one person, one vote requirement. However, we are more than dispensable numbers, we are a community. Um, the unity map proposal by the APA Voice Coalition keeps the majority of Woodside whole and within City Council District 30. We support this map, this unity map proposal, because keeping Woodside whole means that 
us as an org community organization, we can continue to provide vital services and advocacy efforts that our community members um, rely on. Um, speaking of um, City Council District 21, in 2021, uh, 26 rather, in 2021, we elected our very first ever female and immigrant representative in Council Member Julie Wan. The district that elected Julie Wan had an Asian plurality and a, was a well-proportioned district. By redistricting parts of Manhattan and Roosevelt Island into City Council District 20 and the bulk of Woodside into City Council District 30, it will create two white plurality districts at the expense of a performing minority district. Uh, the communities that we do serve, um, such as members of the Latinx community who came here by the busload, reside in both neighborhoods of Sunnyside and Woodside, which under the commissioner's proposal, commission's proposal would be split from each other. Your most recent map proposal also has our office located in redistricted um, Council District 30, separate from our most of our constituents and our clients um, from the greater Woodside area. Uh, when residents of Woodside are facing unlawful eviction and need housing assistance, or when working parents need a safe and welcoming local after school program to look out after their children, they come to Woodside on the move. But it, with these new map proposals, that brings that all into question. Um, I want to thank you for your time and for giving us the opportunity to testify. Thank you and so much. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, is it Samton, S A? It looks like S A M T E N, Noran. That's probably it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, is it Pema P M A Choden? Yes. Oh, okay. And then following you, if Ampano or Arcarella, and then Emma Gartan. Respected, um, oh, I cannot see at all. Oh my God. Respected um. Commission Board members, and good evening to all. My name is Pema Chodon. And I was born and raised in Tibetan refugee camp in India. Hmm. I migrated to the United States over two decades ago, and I'm proud to be a Queens resident, a New Yorker, and then I'm fortunate to be a Tibetan American. I cannot see at all. Sorry about that. I cannot see <laughs> the reflection. <laughs> for over three decades. So we, the Tibetan refugee from Tibet, India, Nepal, and Bhutan, migrate to US uh, and scatter around different states. The New York Tri-State is the highest Tibetan population living here, comparing other states. The majority of Tibetan lives around the uh, Astoria, Sunnyside, Long Island City, and Woodside. Today, there are over 15,000 Tibetan in this neighborhood. We, the Tibetan community, has been a uh, un unified part of Council District 26. Our Tibetan Community Center is the largest nonprofit organization represent in the U US. Our community center is also currently in the district in, U uh, in Woodside. Even our Queen's Library branch in Woodside has Tibetan language books. The, the library would be placed in another district. It's a sad for me and for the Tibetan um, community. Um, at our community center, we learn to preserve our identity and language, art, cultural, for me, the community center is heart and soul for the Tibetan American in New York. It would disrupt the community service and flow the resource what we got help under the leadership from the Council District 26. For this first time, even in New York history, we have a council office had provide resource and translation in our Tibetan language. 
this is very very how grateful this america is to us um by presenting our identity and political power relies on our unity to have fair and effective representative by one council member in conclusion i strongly urge and request to all the commissions to make sure Woodside stay together with Long Island City, Sunnyside, and Western Astoria. Please protect against fracturing our community and dividing us into multiple council districts. I support to the unity map. Thank you for all. And thank you for your testimony. Is it Ampano? Looks like A-M-P-A-N-O. A-R-B-O-L-E-D-A. Yep. Uh, is it Emma Hartan? N-G-A. Uh, Nagwang. All right. And then following is uh, Christina Brew is here. After you, sir. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Noang. Or good morning, appropriate. Oh, good, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> my name is Noang, and I'm the vice president of the Tibetan community of New York and New Jersey. And uh, I, I'm here with uh, one of our board members. And uh, we have been recently elected overwhelmingly by the Tibetan community of New York and New Jersey. And we represent uh, Tibetan nonprofit organizations of three provinces of Tibet, uh, Student for Free Tibet, Tibetan Nurses Association, Tibetan Women's Association, and many other nonprofit organizations under the Tibetan community of New York and New Jersey. Uh, with the passage of Immigration Act of 1990, the Tibetan community migrated to the United States in early 90s and resettled around in Astoria, Woodside, uh, Sunnyside, Long Island, and mostly in, in Queensboro. And Tibetan community in New York comprises of a variety of uh, personal backgrounds, Tibetan, uh, Tibetans from Tibet, Asylum seekers, refugees from India, Nepal, Bhutan, Tibetan Americans. Tibetan born Tibetans as a displaced people of Tibet over 63 years, we've made this home for over 30 years and we are here as a result of displacement due to the threat of ge genocide of our culture and population. Please do not add to the, to the diminishing of our voice in our community by dividing us into multiple council districts. Over, for over 30 years, the Tibetan community has been a unified part of Council District 26. We ask that you allow us to stay together in the district Tibetan Community Center for New York, New Jersey is the largest Tibetan nonprofit organization. Uh, we represent Tibetans all over the Western world, and we are one of the largest Tibetan communities in the United States. It's very vibrant, it's very vigor, and we always have something in the weekends so that our, we can preserve our culture, identity, religion, and uh, language, etc. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's being too late, so I don't want to go uh, much. My final uh, request is I strongly recommend making sure that Woodside stays together with Long Island City, Sunnyside, Western Astoria, as it has been for the last 30 years. Thank you very much. 
I appreciate it. And thank you for your testimony. Is it Christina or Brew? Um, first name, I can't. Maria? That's a Maria? Maria Figueroa, artist. Okay. Okay. And then that's cross off. I'm going to that signature. And Marie Romain. Uh, Maria, is it Rosario? Jessica Cardenas. 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 Ivan Contreras. Renee Taylor. Shata Perez. Richard David. Okay. And following you, all right, we already did her. And then is Deepak here? And following uh, Richard David is John Cho. John Cho is here. Okay. And then is it Sarani Islam? So, Mr. David? Okay, uh, good night, Commissioner Walcott and other commissioners uh, here tonight. My name is Richard David. I'm a district leader in Assembly District 31 in Southeast Queens. I'm also a board member of the Indo-Caribbean Alliance, who you heard from earlier tonight. I'm here to recommend improvements to the proposed map for Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park. I moved to the United States from Guyana and have lived in Southeast Queens for 27 years. Uh, this is where I landed and continue to live with my mom, my brothers, and their kids. This is actually really common to live with extended family members in this part of Queens. I was surprised to see that in this part of Queens and in New York City, there are actually more Guyanese than even the country of Guyana. Um, and actually, we are the second uh, largest foreign-born population uh, in Queens after the Chinese community. And this is nothing new. It's actually been like this for decades. Trinidadians who also live in our neighborhood are in the top 10 foreign-born population groups as well. And that's nothing new. And so we use the term Indo-Caribbean to represent the ethnic communities of the Southern Caribbean uh, that we all share a common culture, language, and heritage um, to bring us together and mobilize and advocate for our common interests here in New York. One thing that has not changed, though, um, are the political, the city council lines uh, representing this area. And that's reflected in the city council where we have never been able to elect a city council member uh, from any of these communities, although they are such large populations here in New York City. And so in this geographic area, you also have no political offices at the city council level. And so we lack basic access to senior services, education resources, sanitation. The main corridor in our neighborhood doesn't even have garbage cans and immigration resources. And so this commission has this important task to correct decades of undoing. And so what's one night of staying here late to fix 40 years of being overlooked? The current map you've proposed for Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park, it goes far, but it doesn't go far enough. It must include Smoky Park, which is where we have all of our outdoor festivals, every single one of them. It's along 125th Street and Atlantic Avenue. There are also about six blocks that is cut out of South Ozone Park and put into the Rockaways. There's no way for those residents to get representation uh, in the Rockaways if they live in South Ozone Park. And so I'm requesting that this commission use the boundaries of Jamaica Avenue to the north, the Conduit Expressway to the south, Woodhaven Boulevard to the west and the Van Wyck Expressway to the east. These are the same lines we've asked for at the federal and state levels. And we're asking here tonight um, to have these 
uh, lines in uh, the City Council. Thank you all for being here and for giving us this opportunity to testify before you. I appreciate it. And thank you for your testimony, sir. Um, just want to double check. Deep Hawk? Okay, thank you. Uh, John Cho? Saharni Islam? Iris Chang? I think Tenzin was earlier. And is it Delvis? Devis Johnson? Roger Rodriguez. Danelli Rodriguez. William Craigler. <clears throat> Andre Dorf. Richard Kazm Kazami. Loretta Foreman. William Thomas. William Thomas? Okay. And then following William Thomas uh, is Brandy Lee Johnson here. Uh, Yvonne Hogue, Jennifer Robinson. Did I hear a response to Jennifer Robinson? That was a yawn. Yeah. You're the first one I've heard yawn all night. So no, no, don't apologize. We understand. Uh, Jennifer Robinson, George Lugo, Myrna Swaby, Christina Chase, Ellen. I think already testified, follow me. And Tessa Ring Paulden. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Will Thomas. Uh, I'm a new resident of Long Island City. I'm the executive director of Open New York. Uh, we're an independent grassroots pro housing organization. Uh, we believe that New York is suffering an immense housing shortage, uh, largely due to exclusionary land use and zoning policies. Uh, I'll try to keep this very brief, uh, given how late we are. Uh, the one thing uh, we would like to say is our advocacy in land use has given us some insights into the redistricting process, which we would like to share. Uh, the first thing that I want to emphasize is just uh, the Staten Island point that everyone else has made tonight. Uh, you know, they're substantially lower in residence uh, than the ideal district size. It's very unfair. Uh, we think that uh, the, the only point we would like to add there is that uh, Staten Island's political representatives have actively worked with the Bloomberg administration to impose uh, exclusionary zoning and growth controls. They should face the uh, consequences of those decisions uh, rather than be gifted uh, extra representation for simply being a separate borough or controlling the minority party in the city council. Uh, so we think that those districts should be extended out to Brooklyn. Uh, but the other thing that we would suggest, which I don't know if has been mentioned tonight, is redrawing maps with an eye to expected residential change over time. Uh, as map drawers are no doubt aware, population growth has not been equally distributed across the city. Uh, according to the Citizens Budget Commission, over the last decade, over half of the housing built in New York City has been concentrated in just 10 neighborhoods, uh, and fully one-third has been concentrated in just five neighborhoods. So those are the far west side of Manhattan, downtown Brooklyn, Williamsburg, Greenpoint, Long Island City, and Astoria. Uh, the one insight we have from our housing advocacy, population growth is not an independent variable. Uh, it's dependent on housing construction, and because only certain areas uh, of the city are zoned to allow substantially more housing construction, we know that growth will likely be concentrated in those areas. Um, so we know that districts aren't exactly aren't going to be likely to have exactly equivalent populations, but where they have to differ, we would ask map drawers to err on the side of historical data. You know, if neighborhoods are seen, have seen little growth or grown substantially, they're likely to continue on that path. Uh, without serious policy interventions, which means that maps drawn without that in mind can very quickly result in unequal representation in just a few years. Uh, to give a Queen-centric example, District 26 uh, covers Long Island City. It's the fastest growing neighborhood in the United States, and yet it's already over its ideal population by 1,100 residents. Uh, this growth is likely to continue, so it should be an area where map makers feel safe to shoot under. There are a few thousand homes already in residential developments under construction right now. It makes sense to start, uh, you know, with the neighborhood. It, it makes little sense to start with the neighborhood already inequitable in representation. Uh, we'll include more written testimony, but thank you uh, for hearing us today. And thank you as well. Um, is it Nagawang Tashi? Tara Herbert. Um, K-H-A-G-R-D, first name, 
I can't read the last name. Uh, next one is Jason Gulapa. Okay. Ariane. Is that Ari Ariane? Hi. And then following Ariane, is it Farah? I can't. Looks like Farah Sai. And then Evelyn Maya Nacella and Gloria Espinoza. And then Pasang O. Oh. No, okay. She's here. If, if you can line up, and then Mike is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the New York uh, Districting Commission for hearing us today. My name is Ariane Maliwanag, and I am testifying on behalf of the National Federation of Filipino American Associations, a nationwide organization dedicated towards the promotion of civic engagement in the Filipino American community and also part of the APA Voice Redistricting Task Force, which aims to protect APA communities of interest. We appreciate the work and efforts that you've shared on behalf of the district map thus far, which we recognize is no small feat. This is my third hearing, and I stand again here today on behalf of my Asian American community, specifically the Filipino community that resides in Woodside and Elmhurst. I stand here in opposition of the commission's draft map, specifically as it unjustifiably splits Woodside into four districts, 22, 25, 26, and 30, and separates parts of Woodside, including the, the heart of Little Manila in District 30, rather than remaining whole in District 26. I've previously shared about the impactful connection that Woodside and Elmhurst shares with the Filipino community. The home that Woodside and Elmhurst has provided ever since our healthcare workers emigrated to America in the 1970s, the overrepresentation of Filipinos due to the impact of COVID-19, and some of the achievements of our community, including the welcoming mural that greets everyone into our little Manila neighborhood. Again, I want to reiterate highlights and insights about my community. The Filipino population is the fourth largest AAPI population in both New York City and New York State. According to 2020 census data shared by our partners at the Asian American Federation, the Filipino population increased by 15% in New York City between 2010 and 2020, nearly half of them reside in Queens and at least 30% of those uh, reside in Elmhurst and Woodside. In Woodside and Elmhurst lives the highest concentration of Filipino small businesses of New York State, including restaurants, remittance centers, bodegas, and faith centers that serve its community. Splitting Woodside continues to fracture our immigrant community's voice and voting power, impacting our ability to fund for much needed services for our community and cultural centers, and also impacts our ability to address anti-hate crimes. This evening, I advocate for the Filipino American community and the larger APA community. I strongly urge and advocate for the unity map, which keeps Little Manila whole, include, including keeping Woodside whole in District 26 and continuing to keep Elmhurst whole in District 25. It is important that our immigrant families that share cultural experiences, our restaurants, our grocery stores that cater to our communities, are not fractured and instead are visible, heard, and addressed. Thank you for your time and consideration tonight. And thank you for your testimony. Good morning and Tashi Delek to all uh, redistricting commissioners. My name is Pasang uh, Chunda and I am speaking as a Tibetan to oppose the proposed map by the redistricting Commission. We have our Tibetan community center in Woodside, and a lot of Tibetan community lives in Sunnyside and Woodside areas. The main reason uh, why people choose to uh, uh, live nearby and buy houses there is because uh, most of the Tibetans, they send their children to Tibetan language uh, weekend classes, which happens on the Tibetan community center. So mo that's the main reason 
uh, there's a little bit uh, dense population of Tibetan uh, in Sunnyside and Woodside areas. The proposed redistricting week, uh, districting proposed uh, redistricting weakens the voice of already marginalized community. Uh, and I hope our voice will be heard and the district will not be divided at, as proposed. Thank you so much. And thank you for your testimony. And let me take this opportunity to thank all the audience members who are still here. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I, 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 yep, yeah, just so what is your name? So I. Oh. Okay, because I thought I called it earlier, but maybe not. I remember seeing Zoila before, so yes. Yeah, come on, oh, please. Also, I missed someone else. Okay. Go ahead, after you, ma'am. Um, I want to start by saying thank you again um, for the opportunity and um, the commission. Um, being here this evening and um, allowing us to give our testimony. Um, my name yeah, is. move closer to the microphone. Thanks. My name is Zoila Alonzo. I born in Elmhurst Hospital, a lifelong resident of Northeast Queens, um, my city council district 21. I myself, again, Zoila Alonzo, um, here with the Queens Latinos Presente. The framers of the Constitution of the United States chose population to be the basics for sharing political power. Results of every 10 years, we conduct a census. The results of this census help determine how hundreds of billions of dollars in federal funding, including grants and support to states counties and communities are spent every year for the next decade. It helps communities get their fair share for schools, hospitals, roads, public works, and representation. Queens Latino Presente is a grassroots coalition of Latinos in Queens who are concerned about the lack of representation of Latinos at all levels of city government. We also have witnessed the past failures of this commission as it relates to redistricting in Queens County to ensure Latino opportunity districts, as we only have one for the last almost 30 years. The city of New York impanels a commission to ensure council districts continue to reflect population and demographic changes. The borough of Queens is the most diverse place on the planet and the Latino community is the largest minority group in our borough. Have been, are. This has been the case for over 30 years, but our representation in the city council does not reflect that. Just this year, the New York State demonstrated its own inclination to violate constitutional principles, and as a result, have come under the state Supreme Court appointed special master. We urge the city of New York not to make the same mistakes. We propose three majority Latino districts in Queens County as representative of the population. The first is City Council 21. This district is a majority Latino district and has been represented by a Latino since 2002. It covers East Elmhurst, Corona, Jackson Heights, and Elmhurst. Since 2002, no other majority Latino district in Queens has been created by the commission. Extremely concerning. The second district could adjourn the 21st council district with a more equitable we reconfiguring 25th council district, which could take into account the large Latino population in Jackson Heights, Elmhurst, Woodside, East Elmhurst, and parts of Corona. We also propose the creation of a third majority Latino district that respectfully takes into account the large Latino population of Woodhaven, Ridgewood, Ozone Park, South Ozone Park, Jamaica, and Richmond Hill. 
do not ignore us. We are here. We've been here and we will continue to be here. Next week, to aid the process, our group will be submitting Queens County District maps for your consideration and to ensure that such proposed maps are part of the public record. Thank you for your time. And thank you, and my apologies for missing your name. So my apologies. Uh, Thank you. And what you can do is, again, have them uh, submit public testimony, and we can take it from there as well. Okay. Thank you. All righty. Did I miss one other person? Because we need to really, the lights are going on at the theater, so. Good evening and namaskar everyone. My name is Vishnu Rana Magar from Nepali community. Belong to Magar Association USA Inc. And I live in Ursaid region of the city council district 26. As purpose new map has divided Ursaid into four different city council districts. Our Nepali community will be separated from each other very, very badly as well, which is extremely against of our community's interests and values and it also violates minority language and race protection law. For the first time ever, we have council office who is serving our community in Nepali language, which has its first Nepali intern, and it is a huge victory for us, for us. But new map will ruin all our excitements. So that I strongly recommend, recommend making sure Ursaid stays together with Sunnyside, Long Island City, and Western Australia as it has been the last 30 years in the current <coughs> District 26 lines. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you again for your testimony. And um, what I would like to do is to, again, thank the Museum of Moving Image uh, and also the council member who was a very strong advocate, which allowed us to be here this late night or early in the morning and also our commissioners and our hardworking staff uh, will be in the Bronx tomorrow, or really they'll be in the Bronx today, and uh, then Staten Island on Thursday, and then Brooklyn on Sunday, and then Harlem, Manhattan on Monday. So thank you all, get home safely, and have a good night.